Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today on Stay Home Timber. In this video, I am taking my living room. This is our new home living room, and this is how I have it set up right now, just so that we can be organized and get easy access to some of the items for our small business. And yes, I do have a workout machine in my living room. I know it's crazy, but it gets used all the time. Not usually by me. <laughs> but hopefully more and more by me. So anyway, this is what it looked like before and it's kind of like a country uh, feel, I don't know, rustic maybe some parts or it's kind of a mess to me. So it doesn't really reflect what I like or my style. So I wanted to give this room a makeover and I'm gonna be making it over in the dark academia living room library kind of style. I want everything to be moody and dark and cozy. That's what I'm looking for. It's like a rainy day, you just curl up on the couch and read a book. That's the feel that I'm looking for. So let's get started on making this room over. So I do want to mention that I am not getting any new furniture. I just don't have the budget for that. So these white shelves in the background, I'm actually going to move them somewhere else. And you can see these black shelves over on the side here on the left of the kitchen and the fireplace. Those are what I'm gonna put over there and I have a couple more in the dining room and I have a couple more elsewhere in the house. I have a ton of these cube shelves because they hold so much and they were very inexpensive from Walmart. So they were my main furniture in our last home for our budget. And then you can see I do have um, this ottoman that's just a kind of country blue, I don't love it. And then over in the corner is a secretary desk cabinet, which I love. I found that on Facebook Marketplace and the lady gave me a really great deal for under $100. It is heavy as all get out, but it was a family heirloom of hers, so I love that that is in here as well. You can see we have a beautiful wood burning stove here in the front and some side tables on the side of the fireplace. We call it fireplace, it's not a fireplace, but. All right, so one last look at the shelves back here, just to kind of see. You can see the white and gray striped bins with the wood handles. These are the most expensive bins. This is one my budget was a little bigger, and I don't have a budget to replace them, so I'm just gonna have to make these over to fit the new aesthetic that I'm looking for. But these are the sturdiest bins that I have ever found for these cube shelves. They're my favorite, but definitely not budget friendly. So I will link those below, below in case you guys are interested in those. And then you can see I've just went with whatever bins were on sale. I've hidden those ones behind the sofa because I didn't want the room to have like an eyesore like that. And also these shelves have this little cutout here that I have some decorations on. I really want the shelves to go up to the ceiling. So on this shelf, this wall shelf, uh, line I have a three by three shelf stacked on a three by three then in the middle here I have a two by four stacked on a two by four these are cubes that I'm mentioning and then on the right is a three by three cube shelf by a three by three cube shelf all from Walmart these are the same size as the Ikea Expedit or Calyx shelves and again just behind the couch I hide the things that just aren't as pretty so that um, it makes the room flow better and it's not an eyesore but all of this I'm hoping will uh, not be needed to hide anymore that I can just have everything kind of work together in the room so the very first thing I have to do which is going to take forever because there's so many bins and baskets is to unload these shelves and the other thing about these shelves that I want to just mention is I would love to have shelves where I could put more decorations instead of just having bins and bins the bins um, hide a lot of stuff and it makes it look nice and neat compared to what it would look like if I was just putting stuff on the shelves so they were a great um, just organizer and so I'm gonna keep those but I'm gonna move them around and I actually am going through some things and seeing what we actually need in here inside the house or what we can take outside of the house and um, maybe some things that I can get rid of and now I have three sons that are gonna help me move these shelves out they're each doing a portion and I'm so grateful for three sons they may not be as grateful to have a mom that it's constantly needed things moved not constantly but it probably feels like that um, but I love that they are willing to help me without complaining so I was really grateful to have them help and there was a lot of stuff to help do but really just this heavy lifting stuff and then they also did help tape all the doorways because i'm kind of a shorty so this is kind of the long part if you guys are going to do a makeover you just really need to get your mind ready and prepared to have to unload everything move things out of the way so that you can you know do the painting or whatever wallpapering whatever you're going to be doing in the room so that uh, you just have to give it put your mind it's going to take a lot of time and this is another little thing that i need to let you know is it always takes longer than you think it's going to that's like one of my rules in life that i say to my kids all the time because when you're on a time crunch you it's just always going to take longer so just know that when you're making over a room it's always taking longer so i'm showing you around the thermostat here that there is the old paint from the very first when the house was built in the 90s it's kind of that 
orangey yellowy color and then the previous owners had it this tan color but I like I said want it to go really moody now I'm showing you the curtains right now they're like high water curtains they're not made for these doors but these are ones I had from another house that I didn't want to waste so I'm using them for now but now that my husband's giving me a little bit of a budget for this living room I'm gonna get rid of these curtains I hate that they're um, so high on the window there it they just look out of place so i'm hoping to have some that cover that now i'm just using these plastic drop cloths from dollar tree i have a bunch of these i scooted one around and then i had a second one so you know i used two for this room but you can use more they're a dollar 25 each you can also get a pack at lowe's or walmart home depot i'm sure they all have that okay so here is my paint color now you guys this is in the black section of lowe's and the paint color is called forest canopy can you see it just that green so this is like a black green and i know it looks really green next to this black tray which is a paint liner tray but it is so beautiful and in certain lighting it also looks black the room looks black but it's just gorgeous just wait you're going to be so excited so well at least i hope you are so this is the color just a deep dark almost black green now I'm using the Dollar Tree broom pole to start out with the roller, um, but then it kept, because of the angle of the couch, I kept hitting things, so I decided to just use the roller alone. The couch wasn't going to go much further forward without some trouble, so I just went for it with just the roller. I did a bunch in the middle, and now I'm going to go across the top for a while, and then I'm going to come down and do the bottom for a while. I am not a professional painter. I'm sure this is not the way that you're supposed to paint, but um, you know that show Trading Spaces? That probably dates me in my age, but anyway, um, they did the W's and the side, side rolls, and so I'm just trying to do what I saw on that show. I don't really watch home improvement shows now, but I did when I was younger. I think one thing to note is that when you're going darker on a lighter color, obviously that's easier than going lighter on a, a darker color, but there are a lot of spots that will show through with the light paint, so you're going to have to go back over. And so I did have to touch up. I didn't have to do a full second coat, but I had to just go around and see where the spots were. Okay, so this is my little cubby cutout, and this was where they used to put TVs back in the 90s. So they had these little cutouts for people to put their TVs in, and um, it has this glass top on there and this came with the house I have my little um scraper underneath it to try to get it out because I couldn't lift it up and it took it off really easily so um in one piece without breaking it which is what I was afraid of and so this is what we're working with over here in this cubby area we have these white doors that were painted the vent up there and then this was like a little um this was a speaker where you put the speaker uh hardware stuff and then we have the speakers overhead in our living room but we've never used it we don't have the equipment for that but um just in the 90s that was super popular so now i'm just painting all of this section the cubby and everything around it to uh make it all the same color and um what i love about this color it's it's i think it's called the eggshell anyway it's like a slight sheen to the paint and that's recommended for any room that's going to have a lot of fingerprints and possibly get dirty and we have pets, so obviously this was a good idea because it'll wipe clean. But what I also love about it is that it reflects the light on that dark color. So I think it's just another added bonus to keep the room from being too dark like a cave. Now I'm doing the edging, and the edging in painting is like the hardest job. It takes the longest. So this took longer than even all of the painting to do because you're trying not to get it on the ceiling and trying to make sure you um, blend it in to where the paint ends. So that's what I'm doing now, takes a long time. Painting takes a long time. So just be ready if you're gonna paint a room, especially a big room, that it's gonna take some time. Now this is a vent that was above that cubby and I'm gonna spray it with this matte black. I watched, um, I watched a gal who painted her house, a lot of rooms in her house black. I'm trying to remember the name right now. Hopefully I can remember it. If, if not, I'll, I'll link her below. But anyway, she mentioned to paint the vents and even the switch covers dark as well because it helps the room just pull together and it doesn't look like such uh, an out of place piece so that's what i'm doing i'm spray painting them in okay so now for the fireplace i have all those bins that i took out of the shelves all stuck up here and i'm just taping off the fireplace edges and then i'm just gonna put a big cover plastic cover drop cloth from dollar tree over the top of the tv and all of the bins now i love this little circle table that was on the left side of the fireplace i'm gonna put that in my office it's perfect I know this is a little darker right now. It's been a while and so it's dark. The light is not doing the room justice right now, but I'm just painting the sides of the fireplace. 
And our TV is actually mounted. It's kind of a long story, but uh, it's supposed to push back up, but it doesn't push back up. It's like this mount that's supposed to push up ag ag above your fireplace. It doesn't do it. So it's kind of just hanging out there. Now for the side against the kitchen, the left side here, I put a some painter's tape in a straight line and I checked with the level and then I just painted the side there and I made it even with the balcony upstairs. So I think it kind of matches like for the room to blend. We were kind of talking about a couple ways how to end the room and this is what we decided on. So now it's time to put up the curtains. The walls are dry and I decided to go with this velvet grommet curtain. It's a dark uh, blackout curtain in the olive green color and this is the 52 width by 95 long so it's definitely gonna be long enough to touch the floor which I'm so excited about now I tried three different green color curtains and um, sent the ones back from Amazon that did not quite work with the color and these ones I think are really pretty with the color it's called olive green I didn't think olive green would work but I think it looks really nice they just look so um, high-end and elegant but they were under $35 when I bought them so I know the prices sometimes vary so uh, we also had a coupon that we clicked on the website so if you do like these and you find them at a higher price maybe just wait and see when they get a coupon or when they go a little on sale all right so now I put up a little piece of tape to center these shelves and these are the three by fours that I had in my dining room that I'm centering in the middle of the living room and then I'm putting two three by threes on the side and then I'm gonna stack other three by threes on top. But before I do that, I wanted to show you what I'm doing on these top shelves. I unscrewed these screws here, just loosened them up on these cube shelves so that I can lift up this top piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out these two vertical panels here, these shelf panels that make the cube. And then I'm gonna have one open piece on top, which I'm very excited about because it's gonna give me room to decorate more than just 13 inches wide. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I left those white pegs in there to help support the shelves below. You can always paint those or take them out or clip them. Some people have clipped them. Now I'm just tightening that top back on. I did that for all of those. And I wasn't gonna do it with the middle three by four piece, but when I saw the other two open on the side, I wanted the middle open as well. And so I really love how it looks, the, the whole top just kind of open like that. Again, the pegs are on there. You can paint them. I just kind of covered them. Hmm. They're not really noticeable, but I think I covered them with decorations. Uh, maybe not intentionally. A couple were intentional, and then the other ones are just not very showing. But anyway, here's the back. The full wall shelf. I love a full wall shelf. I love it behind the sofa. I think it's really great. And look how beautiful this shelf is. It's not black. It's like a dark brown. I think they call it oak. Some oak grain in the middle there. But now we're talking about these gray and white striped bins. Okay, they do not match. I'm trying to show you here that they do not really look like they're gonna work well with those dark shelves. So I'm taking this um, extra packaging from an Amazon shipment and sticking it in between the bin. When the bin is folded now, I took out the bottom piece and I folded the bin and I'm gonna spray paint this with a, a black matte spray paint. Now I'm only gonna spray paint the faces of the bins. I'm gonna do these to all the bins that I'm gonna use in this room. And the reason I'm only spray painting the front face is for one, they're gonna be pushed in so nobody's gonna see the sides or the back. And for two, I do not wanna waste or go over a budget on spray paint alone. I mean, you can really spend a lot on spray paint. So here's how they look when they're spray painted. And I know that the lighting of this camera right now is picking up some blotchiness, but when you're in the room, you can't really see the blotchiness as well. Um, maybe it's just my eyes, I don't know. But I could have done a second coat on these. I said not to, to save on spray paint. So this is what I did with the Covey right now. I'm trying to figure out what to do. This little shelf was in there before when it was like the tan color, um, but the mirror I put behind to reflect light, but I'm not liking the way that this looks. So I know I wanna do something else with this little cubby here. I'm gonna have to figure it out and work out some things. And it actually takes me quite a while <laughs> to figure out what to do. Okay, so these are two pretty large vases that I got from Ross and I got these over a year ago, but I did conclude them in my budget um, just because you can find similar vases at a thrift store. They might be about $5. These were $4.50 brand new at Ross. Really great size and I love the shape of them too. And I think they're pretty how they are with a like, little cracked, but one's gold, one's silver, and the um, just the sheen is not gonna go with a moody room. So this is a Dollar Tree cylinder vase that I'm just trying to show you the size difference of. And the cylinder vase actually fits inside that just, I'm just showing you the size there, but um, I'm not gonna use it like that. And 
that shows you how big it was for a good price of $4.50. And again, you can find vases like this at your local thrift shop. I would recommend getting them there. This is a London gray color that I love. I love this color so much. It's so pretty. It's kind of like a gray um, beige, no, brown. Anyway, but I did paint the vases that color at first. I didn't like it because I did some detail on it. That's in a different video. But what I ended up doing was using this camouflage color that I actually got for another project later in this video. And so I used the camouflage color to color the vases now. And then just to give them a little darker color, I used what I had left over from the office of the oil rubbed bronze, which was hardly any spray paint left in here. And I just gave them a little spritz to have some darker spots. And it left a little bit of glitter metallic look, which I thought was pretty. So now they kind of look like ceramic vases to me. All right, back to the fireplace. I do not have these shelves in that dark color, which I wish I did. I think they would look so pretty up here in that dark color, but I have these white shelves. So the first thing I'm going to do is elevate these shelves by adding some feet to them. And I have these linked below. These are just inexpensive me metallic feet that give it uh, a really nice look. I really like how these look. I first um, did the E6000, the Gorilla Glue version, and I was trying to use my husband's drill. Now, previously, I just screwed it in with a screwdriver on the other shelves that I did like this, but um, I wanted to try the drill and I just couldn't get it. So here's my husband helping me. I made him <laughs> stop what he was doing and come help me real quickly to get the legs on this. And he helped me with both of those side shelves. So that was really a nice surprise. Now for Dollar Tree, this is the wood contact paper that I'm using. And this one that I'm putting on right now is from last year, 2022, that I just had in my stash. And then I went to buy more rolls so that I can have enough for this project. And this is a funny story because Dollar Tree has changed their rolls. For one, they're not as long. And for two, you're gonna see in a second, it is a completely different color. I don't know, it's not as long and look at that, it's completely different. I like either one fine. I think the one on the left looks a little more realistic, but that's the one from 2022. So make sure when you're using your rolls, if you have some in your stash, to make sure they're the same year at least. This is the Antique Birch. Both of the rolls said Antique Birch, but the 2023 Antique Birch was a darker shade and was not as long as the 2022 Antique Birch. So that's just a little tip. Make sure that you have at least the same year and the rest of the rolls matched as long as they were the ones, the new ones from 2023. So I just set those other ones aside for some other project that's smaller. And I'm just putting this on and you guys, this actually looks really good, even despite like the wrinkles and how I'm not doing it perfect. So do not be intimidated to do a project like this. When my in-laws were here and they have a furniture business, they could not tell that this was not real wood, which is crazy, right? Even with all my little mess ups and the wrinkles and, um, just even some of the sticky out parts, they thought it was real wood and they had to come touch it to make sure that it wasn't real wood. So that is a really good compliment and it just tells you how easy this paper is to work with because I am not a furniture makeover person. So super easy. Do not hesitate to do something like this if you just wanna change a piece of your furniture, which saves you money and you know, obviously you can reuse what you already have. All right, so I wanna show you how easy this is to patch. I know this doesn't look really great on this close up view, but for one, this is piece is gonna be over towards the fireplace, but you can see the line, the um, grain was super easy to line back up. If you didn't see that cut line, it would look like it was one piece of wood. So very nice, very easy to work with this Dollar Tree contact paper. And this is the light, or this is a darker color of the Dollar Tree contact paper. Again, I am gonna put that side towards the fireplace just so it's a little less conspicuous. Now for this top cube, I am going to um, use the paper on all of the inside, the top of the inside, the sides of the inside, and the bottom of the inside. But the second cube, I'm only going to paper the bottom and the sides. Now part of that is because the two rolls that I had from last year um, are not gonna work, so I feel like I'm gonna run out. Uh, and actually I did. So I did run out and if I had those two rolls available that weren't the right color, it would have worked out, but it still looks really good. You're gonna see in a little bit. Okay, I want to show you this sofa. So our dog was digging outside and then decided to lay on a cozy place and she's not allowed on the sofa because it's such a light color and teenage boys are messy enough on a sofa. But she got up here after she had been digging in the dirt and it's so bad, so gross. It's so bad that I, I wouldn't even vacuum it off. I am just gonna throw all of the covers in to the washer, which by the way, they're due for that anyway. And it's gonna really help the room look fresher when it is ready to be done. So, ugh, all that dirt, <laughs> it's dogs. 
Oh my goodness. So I'm taking all the covers off and I'm just putting the cushions in my room. That's why I'm disappearing for a little bit. And these are super easy to remove. This is a good quality sofa that we found on Facebook actually. So it's, it was used, but in good condition. Now you can see that the cushions and covers are removed. How dirty teenage boys can be when they're having snacks while they're watching their movies or TVs at night. So it was so dirty. I started to use my little tube, but it wasn't super efficient. So I just put the vacuum right up there and started sucking all the junk out. And now I'm using the tube for what, you know, what the sofa would probably look like if, if I vacuumed it more often, which I need to now that I know. And then the arms were actually really dirty as well, just from teenage boys leaning on them. And so I am wiping those with an upholstery cleaner and one of these microfiber rags from Dollar Tree, but you can get those anywhere. And now we're moving on to the mirror that's up here on the old shelf. This is a rustic mirror. I think it is really cute. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It's a good size and it was only $20, which was a good deal at the time. And But it's not gonna fit in the room. It's not moody enough. And I hardly ever paint wood, you guys, uh, like a project like this. I usually really love the wood grain, but I'm gonna try to do this one black. And this is a semi-gloss black. It's the only one they had left at the store at the time. I usually do matte, but I decided to paint, for one, the switches, which those are gonna go on the sides of the window with the curtains, and the frame as well. And I actually really love it. I love that it has a sheen so it can reflect light as well as the mirror reflecting light. So I had to move the hangers from the side to the middle, from the top to the middle, and um, that was super easy to do. And now I'm gonna use monkey hooks. I'm using the strong monkey hooks, even though the little ones will do 35 pounds, I'm using the strong ones that do 50 pounds each. And this is the cubby, you guys, and I'm just gonna cover, ta-da, the back of that. It looks so messy and gross with that hole in the wall. And now it looks beautiful with that mirror, I love it. So this is a Dollar Tree canvas art piece, and this is a Dollar Tree uh, wood frame. And it's actually like a paintable frame. So what I did is I painted the frame black and then I took Dollar Tree metallic ribbon, which is so beautiful and elegant, and I cut it to fit the frame around the picture frame. It was kind of difficult to glue. I used hot glue and super glue and then I put a piece of parchment paper on top and then put some books on top until it dried and I let it dry for a couple hours. And now it's ready to go. It looks really pretty. And I'm gonna pop that artwork back in there that is so pretty. I love how this turned out. This is probably one of my favorite little paintings, um, definitely that I've ever seen at Dollar Tree. So I wanted to do a second one to balance out the sides of the bookshelf. This is gonna go on the big main bookshelf. Again, I'm using the super glue with the, I guess the Lean's Tacky glue on that one. And I'm putting the parchment paper down and books on top. All right, so this is a thrift store find. This is a white board and it has this black frame and the black frame has this beautiful etching on the side. I thought it would be super pretty to um, put some metallic accents on that. So this paper on the back has some brown smashed something, kind of looks like mouse poop. That's what you get at the thrift store sometimes. So just clean it up really well. This is isopropyl in the, in the spray bottle that I have that's gonna disinfect and clean anything. Now that it's all clean, I found this dark brown craft paper. It's kind of like a medium brown. And I'm cutting the corners. What I'm trying to do is fill in. That was a Monet print that I got off of Amazon. I, they ended up being a dollar each from Amazon, which is such a good deal for Monet prints, and they're a really good size. But of course, you do have to buy 20. So this is a $20 set, but it came with 20 Monet prints. Beautiful, beautiful prints, and the size is kind of awkward, and that's why I had to add that paper. So now I'm using super glue on the paper and then also on the sides. And I used some Aline's Tacky Glue in the middle there, which I wish I hadn't because you can kind of see the ripples, but now that it's hanging up, you can't notice it. So this is an antique copper paint that I got from Walmart. It was less than a dollar. And I'm just trying to use a sponge uh, paint applier to catch the edges only. But that only works so well, maybe with a steady hand, I don't know. So I ended up getting quite a bit on the frame, but when I did do that, I liked how it looked. So I decided to keep it. So I like the copper look on the frame and then on the edges, I think it's really pretty. And I love this Monet picture, it's so pretty. I don't know what it's called, but she's walking on the garden path that's just gorgeous, gorgeous. So this is one of my favorite paintings of the Monet that came. There's actually quite a few. Okay, so for another thrift store frame, I am cleaning it up. This has some pretty cute poppies in there, but it's not the style for this living room. And it had the prongs on the back, which made it really easy to remove all the pieces. Now for this red cardboard frame, 
I'm gonna have to change that color and this is another Monet garden path I love it I think it looks you can just almost feel the breeze on your face when you look at it really pretty with those shadows and I'm gonna spray the red frame ultra matte black and I think that's gonna help really pull it together Now another thing I grabbed from Amazon were these Moody wall prints. These are cardstock, a little thicker than the Monet prints. Really beautiful printed out artwork here. And I had these frames that I have had for a really long time back when I put like little phrases up for the kids to read. Um, they're much older now and so I've had, actually had these for a really long time. I don't even know how I still have them except they were probably in storage because we've been moving around a lot. So um, they fit perfectly with these prints. Now I'm going to link these below. They are really beautiful and but you don't have to go with these ones. They have a ton of moody wall art prints on Amazon. Now moving on to the ottoman, I decided to give it a really good clean. It had all that teenage foot stuff. And once it was clean, it discolored it quite a bit. So I don't know, maybe some of the uh, some of the paint, or not the paint, the dye came out when I was washing it. So this is how it looks now, really low quality. So I'm going to spray paint it with that camouflage paint. Okay, and this is how it turned out, and I love it. Okay, I couldn't get a brand new ottoman. It was just not going to be in the budget, but this is so pretty with this camouflaged dark green spray paint. All right, so now I'm working on this cubby and I'm trying to figure out what to do. I found some things that I had around the house. These are some florals um, that were from Ross a long time ago and they came right out of the jar, which I am so excited for because that jar is like a little too country for what I was looking for. I love this Dollar Tree vase. It's so elegant and I actually do love it in the glass, but I thought the glass might be too much for this actual cubby. I wanted to bring a little more color and moodiness into it. So I'm not sure about this gold and silver basket. I don't think it's gonna stay there. But what I'm gonna do for the vase is paint it with this flat gray first and then just go over in spurts with the London gray that I love. I'm also using this Dollar Tree planter bucket that I got. I'm taking off the twine and I'm gonna spray paint that as well. And so this is how it looks when it's done. It's actually really cute. I think it looks like pottery really lovely and now these candlesticks i'm not sure what i'm going to do with them right now they're on little candle holders so this is an old frame that i had again and i put one of those moody prints from amazon and this print is actually a canvas from dollar tree and i put it inside a frame that i already had now these are the led taper candles from dollar tree just want to tell you the light is actually really ugly it's like a bright bright white it's not that pretty orangey flame look so not my favorite but for decoration when and just for use when the power goes out perfect so i stuck the actual wick flame into the floral foam and then just spray painted the rest of the body of the candles and it turned out so well so here's a quick pick of the vent and those white cabin doors spray painted i spray painted all of this and it looks great so here's the london gray a london gray bucket from dollar tree as well this was a shorter white planter bucket that I had from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use that as a riser up above this secretary cabinet desk. Now this is a polished rose gold spray paint and what I'm trying to show you is those flowers were yellow and I spray painted them with the rose gold and then with this kind of purpley color. Now I was really hoping that purple color would turn out a lot deeper. It kind of looks like a light burgundy, not my favorite, but this is how they turned out and with the riser um, I have these white flowers in the middle from Walmart that I got for $5 for the set, which is a really cute set. I didn't leave that like that. Okay, so all the projects are done and now it's time to load everything up. So I'm loading these side shelves that are flanking the, si the fireplace right now with books. I'm using those bookends so that they can hold the books in place and not fall on my little plant from Dollar Tree, which is this really pretty blue plant with the white ceramic um, vase there. And again, I'm using the bookend to hold this other side. So I did the middle section left, the books on left, and now the bottom section, the books on the right. And I have a candle stick with a LED Dollar Tree candle on the bottom there. I have these floral vases that I'm putting on top that I'm gonna show at the reveal. Now on to in the top cube, I put a Dollar Tree basket that I spray painted black. Not recommended, it is chipping, it looks awful. So um, I just have it for now, but I already found something else that works better that I will show you in a later video. So when I wanted to mirror image these, I'm just like a mirror image decorator. So this side, I put the books to the right in the middle and then to the left on the bottom. 
Okay, here are these bookends again. These are so useful because they will hold your book so you could take out a book and it won't. E the other books won't even move from side to side and then you could put the book back when you're done without any trouble or effort. The books also will not fall on whatever decorations that you have around them. So I really love the bookends. I'm using them in places where I'm not doing an entire shelf of books. And you guys, my books are finally getting their freedom. These books have been in boxes for between a year and a half to two and a half years, depending on which books they are, if they are the newer ones or some of the older ones. So some of these books I haven't even seen in two and a half years. So I'm so excited to get these out and have them on the shelf. And it took me a while. And again, I'm mirror imaging the books. I know my husband asked me to kind of mix it up and so it could look more artistic and creative. And I don't know, my mind just could not do it. So this, whatever I end up doing, which you'll see in the end, it had to be the mirror image. And um, so you'll see what I mean in a little bit. I guess I'm just not really artistic enough to do it the way that he was saying, which would be more interesting. And um, actually my boys agreed with me, so I had a little backup. <laughs> so mirror image, it's, that's what it's gonna look like. So that's why I'm going back and forth side to side. And I'm also arranging the books by category. So like all the herbal books are together, all the history books or religious studies books, which is what I went to school for, um, are all together. And so there's fitness books, health books, all that stuff is up there and they're going to be lumped together which this is a luxury that i have not had in my other homes to have all my books on a single shelf where i could just arrange them like that so i'm super excited about this and i am just getting to work now all of the decorations on these shelves for the most part are used or old i've had for a long time but i am using two small dollar tree pots and some dollar tree candles and um, you'll see that at the end as well so super easy, inexpensive. This is like a maximalist book sh bookshelf style. Okay, so that is it. It is time for the reveal. So first we're going to review what the living room looked like before. And the living room was nice enough before. I think it was a little boring. It definitely didn't reflect the kind of cozy, warm, moody style that I was looking for. So I'm really happy I had the chance to make it over. And I hope you guys like the results. So let's go through what it used to look like before fully.
Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys love how the living room turned out. I think it's beautiful and has a lot of coziness and moody style. I love it, love it, love it. I hope you guys like it too. I know it's a shock with the dark color from the light color that a lot of people have, but hopefully you guys understand what I was trying to do with the living room. And coming up next is the master bedroom makeover, which is gonna have a little bit of the dark academia from the living room and the industrial look from my husband's office. So stay tuned for that and for some moody fall decorations and dark academia decorations. Thank you so much for joining me today on Stay Home Tambor. I will see you next time. Bye guys.